has been shot overhead. Lee, uh, boy, Leslie and Juan, look at these speeds here. Well over 100 miles an hour southbound on the 605, now coming away from the 210. This started in the Inland Empire. Uh, we know that it was Ontario's uh, police ship that was overhead. The first place that we heard about this was the 210 around Euclid, so kind of the Rancho Cucamonga area, but it's unclear uh, in what agency this began with, if it was with Ontario or with Rancho Cucamonga. Ontario uses their uh, helicopter for several different departments out there. We heard speeds of up to 100 and 30 miles an hour at one point. This is a carjacking suspect. So uh, definitely believed to be uh, dangerous. Uh, not clear, uh, you know, what weapon was used in connection with that or, or the state of the victim, if they were assaulted or, or anything like that. But very, very high speeds, extremely dangerous now as we uh, flew from the westbound 210 out on the southbound 605 through the San Gabriel Valley. Leslie and Juan. Hey Desmond, we're watching him just blow by car after car, big rig after big rig there on the freeway. How does traffic look ahead of this uh, driver here? Because um, at the speeds he's going, he's going to cover a lot of uh, territory in mm -hmm. a very short amount of time. I, I don't believe that this uh, suspect is going to hit any kind of traffic wow. uh, at this point. All of the Valentine's Day traffic has uh, definitely died down at this point. They, you know, maybe some construction traffic at some point, but I, I don't see anything immediately ahead of us that's going to slow uh, this suspect down. You know, frankly, the, the way that, the, that they're driving, they would probably just fly along the right-hand shoulder to try to get away anyway. We heard the authorities, they were hoping to try to lay down some spike strips or something like that uh, back in, in Irwindale, but that did not work out. The suspect is just going way too fast. It's going to mm -hmm. be very difficult for them to coordinate anything like that. Maybe if the suspect gets off the freeway, perhaps there will be an opportunity to, uh, you know, use the pit maneuver or something like that. I can't imagine that they're going to try a spike strip, though. Uh, but, uh, you know, here we go. Look, we've been uh, over 100 miles an hour pretty much uh, since we got on this pursuit. Yeah, and you, you, were, you were saying um, at some points reaching 130 miles per hour there, and you can tell this car moving very quickly just uh -huh. down the 605 there. Des, are we hearing anything about how many people might be in this vehicle, given that it was possibly connected to a carjacking? Have not heard any of those details at this point and is really kind of par for the course. As we zoom in here, we're looking at some pretty dark mm -hmm. tinted windows. Uh, so it will be difficult for us to appear inside and see if there's any more than one person. But, you know, when we're talking about a carjacking, obviously a reason to believe that this person is armed and dangerous. And uh, starting again in the uh, Inland Empire, unclear what city this started in uh, at this point. But uh, boy, we are just really, really flying along here. CHP, they seem very determined, though, to stick with this one. Uh, we've heard this, we, we've heard CHP with this uh, pretty much the whole time. So it, it's unclear if they started this or if it was quickly handed off. There, as you see, another unit that's entering the southbound uh, 605. But uh, let's see what's going to happen now as we cross the 60 freeway. They were weaving uh, from the left lane over to the far right lane at a couple of different junctures back at the 605. They, they pulled a maneuver right before we went to air where they cut from the far left over towards the uh, right-hand side to kind of try to juke the CHP officer. Didn't work. Uh, they were definitely privy to that, but uh, this suspect, besides the high speeds, definitely capable of some dangerous maneuvers out here. And that CHP officer that we're seeing there just behind the, the driver there, Desmond, doing a really good job at, at uh, just keeping up, with, but with these speeds just going so quickly, um, it could still be dangerous even with you know, uh, limited traffic out there tonight, right? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, you know, when we're looking at, at, a, at, at 100 miles an hour like this, if that suspect were to suddenly slam on the brakes for whatever reason, it's going to be very difficult for that officer to react quickly enough when they're traveling at 100 miles an hour as well. Obviously, you know, trained professionals and to, to deal with right. mm -hmm. something like that should it happen. But, you know, there could be a lot of debris out here on these freeways, potholes. You know, who knows if the suspect tries, you know, a, a sudden maneuver as uh, mm -hmm. zoom in. Not sure what kind of vehicle. I'll double in here briefly. I believe this is a Hyundai. Uh, yeah, may, or actually, it, it's either a Hyundai or, or a Toyota. A Camry. Toyota. Not I thought it might be a Toyota. Sure. Yeah, you know, honestly, not super mm -hmm. familiar with the, with the most modern vehicles out there right now. Definitely looks like a pretty common kind of mid midsize uh, midsize uh, sedan. Mm -hmm. Definitely not a, a sports car. The way that they're driving it here, though, they uh, certainly, you know, kind of acting like it is. Our producer's yeah. telling us it's a silver Hyundai uh, Desmond, just in case we need to reference it again. And that uh, car, for what it is, um, is definitely 
covering a lot of ground at high rates of speed. Now it looks like he's uh, got his left turn signal on, but he's really sticking to that. Uh, that is the carpool lane, right, Desmond? That's yeah. not the shoulder, right? No, that is the carpool lane. Yeah, the southbound 605, uh, both sides of the 605 have carpool lanes throughout the entire duration of the freeway. We're now being told this is a Hyundai Sonata, and uh, we have heard that this began in the city of Riverside. So, uh, you know, if it began with their police department or if, uh, you know, CHP, it, it, it could have been an instance where, uh, you know, the victim of the carjacking called this in to, uh, uh, to the authorities and then it was put on their radar, perhaps the CHP cruiser you know, saw that immediately and because it is believed to be a potentially violent crime. This is one of those ones that they're not going to want to let go of very easily. They're going to want to, you know, take this one as far as it goes, it, uh, you know, despite the danger to folks out here. So oh. let's see what happens now is the uh, unit, yeah, the unit getting is over there to the uh, far position. right. And it might be, uh, my, oh. yeah, it looks like they might be switching out units here. Let's see mm -hmm. if that's what they're doing here. Uh, or, or just you know getting a, another another unit involved in this so uh, and it's now sheriff's 22 who's been on this from the air handed off from Ontario police's uh, helicopter they were the ones that were overhead this to begin with but it's now in LA County so it's LA County Sheriff's deputies we'll see if CHP scrambles their helicopter to get involved in this as well they will be coming uh, out of Fullerton airport typically they will get involved unless you know they're having maintenance issues they also have a, a fixed wing aircraft that uh, is you know equipped with some pretty good uh, kind of you know heat seeking not heat seeking uh, infrared technology mm -hmm. I should say so we'll see how many resources they decide to, uh, to vote on this, but we are still uh, flying along the southbound 605 yeah. now through Whittier. Yeah, Desmond, it looks like uh, occasionally we will see that driver use their blinker here. A moment ago, they actually had the right blinker going. Um, doesn't look okay, like they're actually you. moving to the right there. Appreciate that. Um, but it definitely looks like more CHP officers are now following mm -hmm. this vehicle. I think once Desmond had pulled out for a bit, we saw maybe three or four behind the vehicle, and you right. can see they're, they're close there, and it looks like they're kind of riding on the side. Normally they're right behind them. Mm -hmm. So you kind of wonder if they're positioning for a pit, but you wouldn't think they would because of just the high rate of speed right now. Or maybe they just want that driver mm -hmm. to, to make sure that uh, he can see that there's a lot of uh, law enforcement behind him there. And I'm starting to see, Leslie, I don't know if you noticed too, like traffic's getting a little heavier too. Yeah. We saw some big rigs, look a lot more cars LA. here on the freeway and as Des was telling us, officers are not gonna let this one go due to the violent nature of how this all got started because it's a carjacking suspect who most likely took mm -hmm. this car by force, not knowing what kind of weapon they used, but it's serious enough that they're not just gonna let this one go. Like we've seen other times when they do do something like this. Yeah, and you can see that car kinda losing control just a little bit as it swerved. Uh, but they've covered a lot of ground right now, yeah. coming all the way from Riverside, now yeah. in Whittier, yeah. um, and they continue to head down the 605 South. So this is a lot of ground in a quick amount of time, given they are going 100 plus miles per hour. And you see them just weaving in and out of traffic here. As you mentioned, Juan, traffic mm -hmm. definitely getting heavier now heavier. that they're in the LA County area. Um, uh -huh and it does become more dangerous for those people on the roadway. And we're seeing larger trucks too. We're seeing mm -hmm. big rigs. We just saw that car carrier fully loaded yeah. with cars as well. Yeah. So any quick maneuver by this car yeah. uh, going out of control could cause quite a bit of a problem there Looks like on, some the construction on the 605 freeway. On the yep. 605 here in that yep. left lane, you can see those cones up. Um, Entering the cone zone there, Desmond, huh? Desmond, it looks like this driver, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, 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 Go ahead, Des. It, it is that uh, that time of the evening when uh, Caltrans gets out there on the roadways, you know, to do their kind of typical maintenance work. I believe we're going to be transitioning here to the five freeway. It looks like mm -hmm. maybe to get out of that cone zone, which is definitely a you know a, a fortuitous thing for the workers that are out there. It looks like we're going to be transitioning Ooh. out to the northbound five. Could they pit uh, right here, here if they, if they oh, had a chance, thinking, Desmond? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think there's really enough room uh, right there. Kind of a, a little bit too narrow there with the sound wall and that yeah. right shoulder mm -hmm. guardrail as we now make the transition headed to, uh, through Downey and up towards Commerce and the East LA interchange. Uh, so you know, out of the construction zone, at least, we'll see if there's any other road work ahead. Looking immediately ahead, I don't see uh, anything that's going to slow the driver down, although we are looking at slower speeds. And we are getting some new information here from, from the law enforcement, from what we've heard up here. We understand, and we had heard that there was possibly some kind of domestic element to this as well. 
and we're hearing that the victim is the suspect's girlfriend and that there is also a warrant out for this suspect's arrest already. So this is you know, a, a known suspect, um, which, you know, kind of gives you, uh, you know, kind of clues you in on, on why the yeah. suspect is, is uh, acting so desperately right now, back up to 100 miles an hour, just as I was saying we were slowing down. Now things beginning to really heat up again here uh, on the 5 freeway where there could be traffic at any time of yeah. day or night. So, uh, you know, again, that's, that's a, another wrinkle now uh, in all of this with, uh, with the, the, uh, the suspects, vic the victim being the girlfriend of the suspect yeah. and also uh, outstanding warrants. Wow. Now, now, Des, I know that this is carjacking, but did they say if the, the victim, the girlfriend, they're possibly in the car or they believe no one but that one suspect is in that vehicle right now? We have not heard that part yet. If uh, if the suspect is the only uh, one in the vehicle, I I would have to imagine that she's not in the vehicle mm -hmm. and that she's probably the one that called this in. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, we'll we'll ha we'll have to try to right. work to confirm uh, those details. But uh, but that would be my guess is that you know there was some kind of altercation outside of the vehicle. He took the vehicle and, and that's she was car, you know, left outside and, yeah. and then called the authorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And we are seeing a little heavier traffic there, Desmond. You were mentioning we're heading uh, north up towards Commerce. Of course, there's the Commerce Casino. Uh, there are the outlet malls there. And um, every time I go through that area, pretty much traffic does slow down quite a bit. Uh, whether you're heading northbound or southbound, it's just an area that's well populated, a lot more cars, uh, fewer lanes of, of freeways right there on the five freeway. but. It looks like he's going still at, at a brisk speed of uh, what anywhere from 80 to 95 miles an hour. And as we've been mentioning, those officers not uh, backing down one bit. Yep. I mean, basically, you know, slamming on the gas pedal wherever they get the opportunity uh -huh. to get around mm -hmm. some vehicles. And indeed, you know, this section actually of the five freeway between East L.A. and the 605 has been rated as Caltrans as one of, if not the busiest stretches of roadway. Mm -hmm in the country so that's you know what i mean you know you could see traffic at any time and, and then if they have road work out here you know forget about it it's definitely going to slow traffic down although i don't believe that is the case tonight we will be up at the 710 though pretty soon we're passing by mm -hmm. commerce casino and the uh, citadel outlets right now so we've got the 710 and then a decision to be made at the east l interchange if they're going to transition to the five golden state freeway or the uh, tan the santa monica freeway or the 101 towards uh, downtown l.a and, you know, again, this started in, in Riverside, and, and this took a very indirect way to get here from Riverside. They didn't come along the 91 or the 60. The suspect went all the way up to the 210 and then, you know, went west and then circled back south. And now we're kind of zigzagging north. So uh, definitely a uh, interesting kind of uh, selection of roadway that we've traveled so far this evening, quite a few miles. And when we start to travel that many miles, you start to wonder how much gas this suspect mm -hmm. has in the tank, how long they can keep you know, doing this, uh, you know, because this is can also be pretty mentally taxing to be driving a vehicle for this long at that high speed. Yeah, many times we know these suspects just wanting to get away, especially mm -hmm. if authorities are saying that this suspect already has a warrant out for his arrest um, for possibly something else. So at this point, you can see mm -hmm. they're they're just trying to get away here, Des. But I'll tell you this this stretch of roadway too, with how fast this driver is going. Um, there's a lot of bumps here. There's a lot of potholes yeah. now that ha has rained. Um, given that I drive through here every single day, uh, you wonder if that will be something that, you know, slows down this driver. Right. Yeah, eventually he's going to make means. it into uh, downtown L.A., right, yeah. Desmond, if he continues southbound, where he could hit some possible, um, you know, end of evening Valentine's Day traffic um, in downtown Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they transition the northbound 101, you know, even up until midnight, you can have a, a little bit of residual traffic yeah. right there at the four level, the intersection with the 110. Here's the junction with the 710, that weird one that's on the left. So it looks like they're going to stick with the five. So, uh, yeah, very possible to hit some slowing if they do go up towards, uh, you know, the 101 in downtown Los Angeles. We'll see uh, what happens when we get there. We will be there uh, soon enough. And, uh, you know, you were saying, Leslie, definitely this is not known as being a very a pristine, well-kept stretch of roadway. There could be big uh, potholes or anything, or certainly any kind of junk or debris in the roadway at uh, any point. I did want to note mm. that earlier, I, I kind of got the impression the way that we were seeing CHP moving around, it did almost look like 
the southbound 605 back through Whittier, like maybe they were trying to get in position for a spike strip, and we did hear them talking about wanting to do that earlier. Mm. So, you know, they, they might be hoping to set something like that up. Again, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to do that with these speeds, but it just all kind of depends on uh, what the suspect's next move is going to be. They're definitely, we're switching between different CHP divisions here uh, as we, uh, you know, get from Riverside to uh, Baldwin Park and then uh, East LA, and now we'll be coming into uh, CHP's central area. Mm -hmm. uh, they are definitely privy to everything going on, and uh, we'll see what, if any, plan they have to uh, get involved with this. Yeah, and officers have to keep in mind this uh, could be a possibly a heated suspect they're, they're looking at. Uh, this is possibly stemming tonight from a domestic dispute of some sort uh, where we understand the girlfriend uh, of this suspect uh, apparently called police after some sort of altercation. Uh, the suspect either took off in, in this car, whether it's hers or not, mm -hmm. we don't know, but uh, it's being considered a carjacking suspect, so I'm guessing it might be yeah. her car he took off in, and he's been on the run since uh, Riverside, since the city of Riverside, which is quite a lot of distance to cover in a very short amount of time, uh, going at speeds of anywhere from 80 to even said 130 miles an hour, getting closer now into the downtown LA area. You can see the interchanges uh, right there in the shot, but officers not letting up. And uh, again, the concern is, um, what do you see there, Leslie? I was just wondering if yeah. he was staying on the five here. Des? Yes. Yes, we are staying, yeah. on, the staying on the five. Uh, that center section of roadway, mm -hmm. that's an awful section where the five goes down to only two lanes. Uh, that is where we are getting into right now. Uh, it looks like there, yeah, you see the uh, 101 freeway there off mm -hmm. to the left. So we're transitioning from the Santa Ana freeway to the Golden State freeway section of the five freeway. Going to bypass downtown Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Unless right. they make a move for the 110, the southbound 110. There will be a chance to go onto the eastbound 10 as we go up ahead to the San Bernardino Freeway, kind of double back towards Riverside. We'll see if the suspect's interested in that. Mm -hmm. So we'll be going uh, by the eastbound 10 and then the junction with the 110 and then the two and, and beyond. So uh, we'll see, but it just kind of seems like like the suspect, I mean, we're so far away now from where this began. If they're just trying to drag this out or what, uh, there was just a CHP unit that went through our view there on the right-hand shoulder. I'm wondering if they, that was a spike strip right there, but the suspect was in the middle of the freeway. And uh, if that's what that was, they just would not have had an opportunity to safely unfurl that spike strip there. Yeah, without damaging any other vehicles, right? But uh, oh, you're right. mentioning this This is coming all the way from Riverside, the suspect coming all the way from Riverside. Yeah. So you kind of wonder, does he even know this area? Will he try mm -hmm. to get back to where he knows he's quite a distance away from there, so maybe he's going to stick to the five because or that, the that ten. or the ten here because yeah. that is what he knows. But it will be interesting to see if he, he chooses to double back here and head back towards Riverside, Desmond. That's a possibility, always, right? Yeah, I d definitely, you know, a, 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 a possibility uh, for that. So we, we are hearing it, it just kind of a, a couple of more details that, you know, that this began even before the carjacking with some sort of domestic violence instance that did then led to the carjacking. Uh, so that is a, another new uh, detail, obviously, uh, you know, and this is a known person. It, it sounds like, you know, the law enforcement agencies probably, you know, have, well, they certainly have the name of this person because they've been in mm -hmm. communication uh, with, with the girlfriend. So, um, I'm just wondering if the suspect's trying to kind of run out the clock. You know, so many of these suspects just run for the sake of running, knowing that the jig is up, that, uh, you know, the, the night is almost certainly going to end in handcuffs, and if they're just kind of trying to to run the clock out, uh, so to speak. That's that's kind of what I'm uh, starting to, to think that this is uh, wanted, Leslie. Yeah, and what they, they don't realize all the time, these suspects uh -huh. behind the wheel, is that CHP is not going to give up on this. Uh, they're not just going to let them keep going. Uh, they're going to continue to follow them and make whatever moves possible. As you were saying, possibly using spike strips, um, even a pit maneuver. It doesn't seem like that'd be something they'd do right now, just given mm -hmm. how busy it is and how co congested uh, this roadway yeah. is, how close quarters. So, Especially knowing what they know about the driver at this point. Yeah. They, they obviously know a lot of information about him. They possibly know his name. Uh, they know that there's an arrest warrant out for him prior to what happened tonight um, happening. So this is just adding on to his rap sheet, the, the prior arrest warrant, the domestic violence from tonight, the felony evading from police, 
and, and putting basically the motoring public in danger tonight as he continues on the uh, northbound uh, 5 freeway there. He's near Stadium Way, so he's near mm -hmm. Dodger Stadium right there. Also an area that if there was a game tonight would be very congested. Um, and even the when there is, I know we're not seeing very many vehicles yeah. here, given that how, how dark it is, but there, yeah. this is just a, always a very congested area, no matter what time of day. Right. Uh, traffic always hits around here, and a lot of those large trucks, as we mentioned, um, which going at these speeds, making these quick maneuvers, going from the first lane all the way to the fourth lane there, um, that then also... Uh, could cause some problems for the other drivers and those those big rig drivers as well. So it looks like one CHP um, cruiser right behind this suspect. Des, did the rest pull off? It doesn't seem like we're seeing others. Oh, there they are. At least two, three. Yeah. They they tip. Yeah, mm -hmm. they they typically like to have at least three uh, in pursuit if they can kind of you know have a primary, a secondary, and then one that can kind of hang back and run a traffic break to keep the public out of harm's way if necessary. I mean, sometimes we'll see, you know, double that uh, involved. But uh, right now, I believe there may just be those three units and then obviously the uh, helicopter overhead, which last we heard was LA County Sheriff's Deputy's helicopter uh, that was on this one. So we are still rolling here on the northbound five and uh, basically on our way towards Glendale and Burbank. And we'll be up uh, towards the 134 here pretty soon. Speeds have slowed down a little bit. We, I haven't seen the, the 100 mile an hour craziness that we saw earlier, you know, right before we went to air, it was 130 miles an hour at one point. I mean, when you get to those kind of speeds, it could be very difficult for CHP to keep up on this one, but they've been very determined to uh, stick with it there. See a little bit of road work going on. Looks like a minor project there, just uh, an off ramp that's shut down there uh, at uh, Glendale Boulevard. So if that's not having any kind of effect on traffic, and yeah, you, you know, at, at this point, as, as busy as the five could be, I think, you know, everyone mm -hmm. is home from probably a lovely Valentine's Day dinner and uh, not going to see too many vehicles out here uh, at this point. So a long, long ways from Riverside from where this all started. Yeah. What is the suspect thinking? Where is he thinking of going? What is their plan here? Are they actively trying to evade the authorities or, like I said, just trying to kind of run out the clock and delay the inevitable. Yeah, again, closer and closer here to Los Feliz and the Glendale area. The 5 freeway northbound kind of cuts through both those areas. Desmond, are air air units, airships still above watching from, from your vantage point as well? Yeah, last I heard it was uh, LA County Sheriff's Deputy's helicopter that was uh, involved in this. They had heard if uh, CHP was getting their helicopter involved, even though this has been CHP's pursuit since we heard about this beginning uh, in the city of Riverside. It's uh, possible that they're busy on something else or right. if they have maintenance issues, certainly can happen uh, with helicopters. So, But they are covered from the air with LA County Sheriff's deputies. You know, they're in the air most hours of the day, them as well as uh, LAPD. So, you know, even if, if one agency's helicopter is not a, you know available like, like CHP for whatever reason, uh, you know, sheriff's deputies will lend a hand if necessary. There we see another uh, unit that was just uh, along the right-hand shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, unclear what they were doing, uh, if they were, you know, trying to set up a spike strip or what. But, yeah, there hasn't even been an opportunity for a pit maneuver. Definitely wouldn't do it at this high of a speed. No. And, uh, you know, even if we were stuck in some traffic, probably wouldn't do it either. Maybe if we get off of the freeway, but we've been on the freeway for the entirety of this pursuit as we uh, continue now on the northbound five getting ready to cross the 134. And that's the thing, we talk a lot about mm -hmm. um, this, this car coming from Riverside and we wonder when this suspect jumped in just how much gas was in there, was mm -hmm. it on a full tank, half tank, almost empty, but they've only stuck to the freeways here, which means they could go Better just, gas mileage, yeah, they yep, can go just a little bit longer. And it looks like uh, they're getting are they getting Let's off the see. five here? Getting on the 134. Yep. Yeah, westbound like we're does. Be westbound 134. Yep. Westbound 134. So, uh, 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 getting off of the five freeway here and now headed towards the San Fernando Valley, headed through Burbank now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, here on the uh, 134, right by a Forest Lawn a Cemetery and all of the movie studios. So. Sticking with the freeways at this point, next he'll be making the merger onto the westbound 101 in the San Fernando Valley. Yeah, very soon he'll be heading into uh, our area here, yep. uh, Desmond, in the San Fernando Valley. We are in 
uh, Studio City, the uh, 134 freeway, not too far from uh, where we are broadcasting from um, right now. And, and I know just from experience in this area here, not too busy at this time of night mm -hmm. um, as, as most people are, are heading home, the 134 westbound here. And, and DD is going to be crossing through the uh, Burbank area, the Toluca Lake area, and eventually into the Studio City area and continuing westbound um, for quite a distance. I believe the next freeway, as he was saying, would be the 101 freeway and then eventually the 405 freeway, either north or south, which at this point might be his opportunity to just keep running the clock because there's no rhyme or reason here either. He's just he's just going. At this point, it seems like uh, he's he's swerving there just a, a little, little bit, bit uh, going between two lanes there. Luckily, not very many people. I did see him pass uh, someone on a motorcycle there that was riding in that carpool lane. Um, so you just yeah. hope they're paying attention yeah. enough to see these people take a look. It doesn't feel like he's really has control right. of this car, given how yeah. much he's swerving in and out of this yeah. fast lane Desmond, and how we're, quick we're, he's going. Yeah, Desmond, we're not seeing any uh, obvious signs of, of, of tire, problem with the tires, but like as Leslie was saying, he kind of, it's like drifting from mm -hmm. lane to lane, not really going in any special direction. Do you see anything from, from your vantage point there? Well, no, but I do wonder if the suspect's just distracted, maybe mm -hmm. on the phone, talking to someone. Yeah. You know, uh, a lot of times when, when we're dealing with a, a charged situation like this, like a, like a domestic violence situation, um, you have to wonder, uh, you know, if, if they're on the phone uh, talking to someone and, uh, and, and emotions are, are running right. extremely high. That is, that's just my guess. Just I, I, We've seen it plenty of times when the window is down. Some of these suspects are, you know, yelling into a phone and they're, they're barely paying attention as they're, you know, barreling down the freeway making it that much more dangerous. I have to imagine too that, you know, the authorities have been speaking with the girlfriend wondering if this person is armed, you know, does, does this person have a gun? Do, uh, do they have a knife or something? You know, how was this, how was this taken? How, how was the vehicle taken? Was a weapon used uh, in, you know, relation to that carjacking? So that's uh, other information that, uh, you know, we're not privy to, but hopefully CHP will they can adjust their tactics uh, accordingly if the, you know if the girlfriend can uh, can assure them since she if she was the last person that saw him that they don't believe that he you know has uh, a gun or something then you know they they may be more willing to get out there with a spike strip or or with a pit maneuver if the opportunity uh, presents itself so we're just about at the end of the 134 here as we uh, get ready to go by our studios mm -hmm. in studio city making the merger onto the westbound 101 yeah, we see it right there. He just crossed it. There you go. Again, this is a suspect that we know uh, was in some sort of domestic incident mm -hmm. with a girlfriend out of the city of Riverside. Then we believe uh, carjacked, possibly took the girlfriend's car. We don't mm -hmm. have that confirmed just yet, but that is what we are suspecting. Um, and at this point has evaded officers all mm -hmm. the way now in the North Hollywood area, going to come up to Studio City here on the 101. Um, and has has gone up to 130 plus miles per hour and you can see just kind of swerving and veering off to the side here not really sticking to um, its lane so you kind of wonder yeah. at this point are they speaking to someone are they speaking to the girlfriend do police possibly have that girlfriend in contact with him telling him hey stop mm -hmm. but well, the good news is here, despite the speeds, despite the amount of distance this driver is covered, we haven't seen any car mm -hmm. accidents, anyone hit, and he's stayed pretty much uh, for the majority of, of the time, as far as we've been on top of this, um, onto freeways, which is what officers most likely prefer uh, due to the fact that they're not on, on smaller residential streets that could cause uh, problems with pedestrians um, walking around. Uh, now crossing Laurel Canyon Boulevard here in Studio City, um, continuing heading westbound or northbound on the 101 freeway there in traffic not not too bad officers still behind him air units still above and this driver just not giving any any indication that he's going to pull over or, or stop at least not at this point yeah this driver is now nearly 70 miles away from the city of riverside um, again we don't know at what yeah. point chp started to pick it up but we do know that that domestic incident that carjacking happened mm -hmm. in the city of riverside 70 miles Imagine away. Imagine covering that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not too long ago, Leslie, not even 10 minutes ago, we were in Commerce, right? We were talking mm -hmm. about the Commerce Casino, the Citadel outlets, and, and just how we transi transitioned from one freeway to the other. 
now on the 101 northbound there and, and quickly covering basically almost all of the of the East Valley now heading into the Central and West Valley. He's in Sherman Oaks there on the 101 northbound and, and not a lot of traffic as Desmond was saying maybe he's a little distracted. Mm -hmm. I can see the red blinks right of the, yeah, um, occasionally the do you see that yeah, from the, the officer's car do. behind him occasionally and the blinkers of the car. The blinkers, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can also see blue and red lights kind of reflecting off mm -hmm. the back of the uh, car there which means those officers are still behind him there. Uh, Desmond, um, we've given you a few minutes here, a few moments to maybe uh, see if there's any more information that you might be getting from, from your law enforcement sources up there. Anything uh, new to, to bring up to date? No, uh, nothing really to share other uh -huh. than that uh, we have not heard CHP's helicopter anywhere near this, so it doesn't sound like they're going to be launching to this, and it's uh, L.A. County Sheriff's Deputies uh, 22 that is up here that is on this pursuit right now. So mm -hmm. it sounds like they're going to be the ones that are going to stick with this. Uh, but, you know, what's going to happen now if we head towards Ventura County? Because we're kind of trending that way as, uh, you know, we're crossing the 405, now getting into Sherman Oaks, just wondering, uh, you know, then if this is going to transfer to uh, Ventura yeah. County's uh, CHP. I, I suppose it will. I mean, we've gone through so many different divisions now at this point. The speeds have been you know, kind of erratic. I mean, they were really high for a little while. Then we slowed down to as much as 55. And then he just kind of slammed on the gas pedal, got up to about 95, then tapped on the brakes for no reason. Saw him change lanes with the blinker. Just very strange behavior. You know, sometimes we see these uh, these, these suspects with kind of the, the weird courtesies with the blinkers, but then other times not using them. So, uh, you know, obviously just I'm sure in, in a very panicked state of mind. And uh, but there's been you know no pattern to where we've been driving it basically the only pattern is that we just keep hitting new freeways that uh, we haven't you know hit, hit before um, as uh, we actually have not crossed the 405 yet we're still just east of the 405 but we will be there soon you saw that maneuver back on the five where they kind of cut over at the the last second to get over to the 134 let's see if mm -hmm. they do that again uh, whoa, oh, whoa oh my whoa, goodness whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. all of a sudden on the right hand shoulder yeah I don't think the suspect realized that there was mm -hmm. that 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 uh, off ramp was uh, divided right there. Yep. Uh, that raised section of pavement right there. If they weren't paying attention or what, but sparks started flying. And uh, you know, let's see if they did any damage to their vehicle. Could have easily got a flat tire. That or, woke them up for sure. Or something after that. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So, not sure what that was all about. Just uh, almost like they stopped paying attention and just mm -hmm. zagged all the way to the right hand shoulder. Like they wanted to exit at Van Nuys at the last second, and that did not work out. They probably don't uh, you know, know the that area. That could have ended very, very badly. Yeah, I, I mean, and that could have ended very, very badly. Mm -hmm. uh, now all of a sudden we are slowing down. So uh, did that affect this car at all? Uh, as I double in, the tires on this side still look like they're uh, okay. Uh, we'll see if we get the opportunity to uh, look at the other side at some point now as we have crossed the 405. Uh, so now we are headed towards the West San Fernando Valley. Yeah, things definitely slowing down. Uh, yep. Take a look. This there is what is you again. saw just moments ago. Uh -huh. The car not seeing uh, that shoulder there, uh, that divider there, I should say. All the sparks came up. Mm -hmm. You saw from under the carriage of that car. That's like hitting a like curb, right? That's just as high as a too, curb. Yeah. At, okay, what, 80 miles per hour probably? Mm -hmm. um, and scraping that curb for a good couple feet. Uh, you see the car now definitely slowing down. You wonder if hour. they will Boy, do the pit. pit. Looks like they're going to pit right here. Here we go. On the freeway. Look at that. Wow, they actually did it. That's only the fourth time I've ever seen it happen. They were telling us that the indeed the, the, the front right tire was damaged and CHP decided to take oh, the opportunity there with the tire tread coming off and they pitted them on the freeway. A very, very rare maneuver and now coming in with all the various units. So CHP Oh, no. Yeah, but they're not giving up. Look at that. Oh, and now taking off, you see the damage to the rear done from that pit maneuver. The back uh, but bumper, But the, the suspect in desperation continues. How much longer can this vehicle uh, continue now? They're, they're down to three tires. It looked like I, I saw the tire trick come off of that front right mm -hmm. tire. So we might just be on a rim on, on the front passenger side. Uh, but the suspect still refusing uh, to yield. There's the, uh, I believe that's the officer that, that did the pit maneuver. Uh, we'll see what uh, CHP decides to do next. Take a look now this the back this back bumper, bumper flailing, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, flailing in the wind right here. Yeah. Uh, this could detach at any moment and uh, you know become a hazard for somebody. Uh, so we'll see how long that that bumper can hang on. But uh, boy, things just took a 
very dramatic turn here within the last yep. couple well, of minutes between going up on the curve. Well, here's the, the pit one more time. We're showing our viewers this happening just a short time ago. Desmond telling us in all his time up in Sky Cal, this is only the fourth time they've seen officers um, do a pit maneuver on a freeway at these speeds. Mm -hmm. And as you see there, um, that tire tread just to the left of the car there, mm -hmm. just falling right off. And for a second, we thought, Leslie, that was it. Yeah, it was you, over. you would think the car can't go anymore, right? You saw mm -hmm. the big chunk of that tire thread just completely fall off. Um, yeah. You wouldn't think the car could keep going, but you see the back bumper there, as Des was describing, yeah. pretty much just trailing behind this Hyundai here, Hyundai Sonata. Um, we know that that front right pass or front right driver tire there. Uh -huh. We wonder, is it even there? What's left of it? Well, we're, we're thinking it's a rim, right? Mm -hmm. And there's still three good tires where we assume that this driver can still stay on. And my guess is, Desmond, with three tires, that rim can go for a little longer, right? Because we're not seeing any uh, sparks, um, you know, coming yeah. up off that rim. Yeah, it, it definitely can. I mean, we've seen it so many times where, you know, oh, pit maneuver or, or rather spike strip. Oh, that's going to be it, right? And then, no, uh, it's actually going to continue for a while if the suspects, you know, really want to push it that far um, where we could see see it going, you know, metal on asphalt and sparks flying all over the place. It could even continue for another dozen miles or so after that, you know, depending on the, 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 the vehicle and how sturdy those rims are. I mean, we've even seen suspects continue when it basically gets down to the brake caliber. We're kind of locked into this position right now uh, for spacing with uh, other aircraft, but um, we'll see if, if there, there might still be a little bit of rubber on that uh, on that front passenger side tire, but you know we did see quite a bit of of, of tire tread come off uh, at the end of that pit maneuver, and uh, you know not only that, but this you know hazard in waiting with this bumper uh, that is now hanging on. So despite all that, you know I, I thought for sure we were going to see some some hands coming out the window or whatever, and this suspect decided that uh, they uh, were not done yet, and so uh, we continue. So pretty open roadways here. Um, and we'll just uh, see if, if CHP wants to try another uh, pit maneuver if they get the opportunity. Um, but uh, again, that was that was such a rare thing. Um, I, I'd be surprised if we see it again. It's crazy to see this because that entire back bumper is just being holding dragged on. by the car, <laughs> just holding on by a tiny portion on the right side of that vehicle. Um, and we are getting a better look at this right side because we believe that front tire um, we saw a lot mm -hmm. of the tread come off, so you wonder how much of it is left there. Um, but it's incredible sometimes that these cars can still go 70 plus miles per hour with just three with good three tires. tires. And, and a bumper hanging on. And I'm guessing this, this bumper is also dragging on, on the freeway, making large, uh, loud noises, uh, which also adds to just the intensity, the, mm -hmm. the adrenaline level of this driver here. Wanted for a domestic uh, violence uh, incident Earlier today in the city of Riverside, uh, yeah, for now, yeah, thank you. the victim's girlfriend apparently calling police and before police arrived, uh, the suspect jumped into what we believe is the girlfriend's car mm -hmm. and took off. And here we are now in Woodland Hills, quite a distance. You were saying, Leslie, about 70, 70 75 miles, miles uh, away from Riverside. And this driver has an, a warrant out for his arrest on another incident. So we're talking about you know, the domestic violence in incident from tonight the arrest warrant from prior a prior incident and now the pursuit and the carjacking and and who knows what he did to, to take this car by force. Yeah, and you know, the desperation level, you can just see it here. The pit maneuver was done. Mm -hmm. uh, you thought the car wasn't gonna be able to go anymore, but the driver decided they were gonna keep going. At this point, we have only seen this driver stick to the freeways right now on 101 North in Woodland Hills, about 75 miles away from where this all started in Riverside. Mm -hmm. um, you wonder, you can see CHP, is behind him because as you mentioned you yeah. do see the blue and the red blue lights and red. Mm -hmm. right behind but that I'm, I'm surprised to see that bumper still hanging on mm -hmm. only by one portion of this vehicle here that's Those right bumpers are pretty heavy mm -hmm. and that bumper coming off during a, a pit maneuver um we're going to be showing that again look at this what happened here this is really what slowed down the uh, pursuit is when this driver first hit an embankment there on an off ramp and then officers finally felt that they had a good chance to do this pit maneuver and you can see here it creates quite a bit of damage to the car we see the tire fall off 
Here we go again when he hits that embankment. You see sparks fly, most likely a lot of damage done to the yeah. bottom of that car. And here we go with that pit maneuver. Only the fourth time Desmond said he's seen this happen on a freeway, but this is a but dangerous a, suspect that yeah. they want to bring into custody. And what a great custody. time for officers to, to mm -hmm. do that pit maneuver, right? No one was around. The suspect no. was finally slowing down. CHP trains for these. We know they're the one agency um, that does pursuits the best, not taking away from any right. other agencies. They just train yep. for it the most. Um, so that was the perfect timing for that pit maneuver, except it didn't do enough damage to stop that vehicle or mm -hmm. didn't uh, get that suspect to, to come out of the car. Indeed, and the suspect who's been on the run now for a good portion of this uh, 10 o'clock newscast mm -hmm. on, on KCAL News, and we're gonna continue following this here until hopefully this uh, pursuit comes to an end there. Still the uh, back bunk bar hanging from just a small section of car there, that was ripped off during the uh, pit maneuver there uh, that officers uh, did and, and for a minute as we were saying we thought this was going to bring it all to an end but it's almost like the uh, the, the driver right looked at mm -hmm. the officers saw that they weren't coming at him right away and he took a chance and here he is once again took off yeah you're going to see when he hits that embankment there doesn't see it nope. and the bottom of that car completely just skids past you see mm -hmm. that is when the pit maneuver happens at the perfect timing by CHP on the 101 there. Uh, that driver, yep. you'll see the front tire there loses Fall tread. right off. Yep. Yeah. And then it just keeps going. And what, yep, go ahead, you were saying? Uh, no, I was just gonna ask Des, I know you got a good look at that front tire, Des. Did you, uh, were you able to see if, if it was riding on a rim there? It looked like there was just the, the tiniest sliver of rubber that might have been hanging on uh, on the inner part of the rim. I, I think that's the only thing that's preventing us from seeing any sparks now at this mm -hmm. point, but uh, I would not be surprised to start seeing those sparks flying really at, at any moment now uh, on this. Uh, so, you know, you just wonder how much longer this is, can continue as we now get ready to leave the San Fernando Valley at uh, a couple of the last exits here, getting into West Hills and Calabasas, and then we'll be headed towards Agura and uh, Ventura County. And, uh, you know, as, as you were saying, you know, Leslie, really CHP, they are uh, the pretty bumper. much the best. I think up that bumper just finally, finally gave up there. Uh, so hopefully, you know, CHP, and again, that's why they, they run with multiple units so that they can stop and they can pick that up so that that doesn't become a hazard for anyone. But, you know, you just see how, how well trained CHP officers are for situations like this. To my knowledge, all CHP officers are pit trained. And pretty much every pit maneuver I've seen done, you know, by a CHP officer is is about as textbook as it can be. But you know, even accounting for that, you know, that doesn't. Uh, do you, you still have the kind of the X factor of the mental state of the suspect if they want to, you know, continue doing this? And indeed, they've decided that they do, despite the condition of the vehicle. Uh, if we, but the suspect better be careful because once we start to see those sparks flying like that, I mean, we've seen vehicles overheat and you know mm -hmm. catch fire yeah so the longer that it continues you know on a bump tire and then especially once you're metal on asphalt it, it really becomes a dangerous situation for the suspect so mm -hmm. how far do they want to take it it seems like they want to take it to at least Ventura County because we will be there within yeah. the, the next five minutes you know and hard to believe Desmond we're watching uh, your map tracker there he's at Parkway Calabasas already uh, in the San Fernando Valley covering such an incredible amount of distance how far will the air units and how far will these these ground units go? Will they eventually um, pass it off to another agency? Because we're definitely far away from Riverside. We're far away from the San Gabriel Valley. Um, what's usually the, the, the technique they use to continue this pursuit? They'll definitely hand it off to other uh, divisions of the CHP on the ground. They've actually already done that several times since this began in Riverside and then it you know, went into d uh, various offices like Baldwin Park where we heard this picked up and then uh, East LA and then uh, CHP's Central Division and then the West Valley Division, which we're in right now. So oh, there we go, getting some sparks, starting to get some sparks mm -hmm. now. We'll see if we can uh, work it over to the right-hand side to see more of those, but you can see uh, now how, uh, just, just like I said, now we're starting to really see the, the, the metal making that uh, heavy friction and a lot of heat 
uh, with the with the cement there of the roadway. So that's we'll see how the suspect is able to handle that. As for the air, uh, well, that uh, that the, the LA County Sheriff's deputies helicopter overhead should still have quite a bit of gas in the tank. They picked it up right about when we did, and if they had a full tank. I would estimate that they should have at least another 45 minutes left before they have to break off, uh, but not sure if they had a full tank when they took off. So uh, we'll see how uh, that plays out from the air, but on the ground, it should be a fairly straightforward thing, handing this off to uh, CHP and Ventura County. Yeah, Desmond, it looks like we're starting to see the uh, back blinkers blinking. There's uh, that uh, bulb that usually lights the uh, license plate, which has now you know, been ripped off with the bumper as well. That looks like it's kind of blinking as well. So um, it's just a matter of time, my guess is. We've already seen a few sparks coming from that uh, rim, that front uh, passenger side rim on the car. Um, I'm guessing any any change to the freeway, and, and if he hits a, perhaps a pothole or if he hits any sort of debris, that could change things again. Um, but right now we're not seeing any of those sparks again. Yeah, uh, this, it, it's... Uh is kind of kind of peculiar there. No, we we did just see a couple of sparks, and and now we're not uh, at the moment. I mean, they, they could just you know come and go at any moment, but uh, we have seen decidedly slower speeds. I mean, the suspect did try to get it up to 80 miles an hour briefly, but now we're getting down between kind of 40 and 50 miles an hour. So now you're starting to wonder, you know, if this is the vehicle just basically deciding I've had it. Well, now we're starting to see some smoke, and oh boy, are they coming in for another pit? They might be. Let's see uh, if they they look like they were kind of getting a position. Now there's look at that. Now More we're getting sparks. the sparks and the smoke starting to come off uh, from this vehicle. So uh, you know, right on cue, just as you were saying there, Juan. So uh, look, this this suspect pushing this hard, uh, this this car as hard as it will go uh, to try to get up to the speed limit. Uh, I can tell you though, if CHP is going to try a pit maneuver now at this point, they're probably going to wait because we're coming into a uh, a a construction zone for that wildlife crossing that they're building on the 101 uh, in the Agura Hills area at Lost Hills. That and this is that time of night where they take to the uh, where they take to the uh, roadway to work on that project. So uh, we will be passing through that soon. Not sure if any work is happening tonight, but we will be headed through that road work area soon, and then we'll see what CHP does after that. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. Our Pat Harvey joining us now can to continue this. Uh, Breaking news story here, a carjacking pursuit um, that started in the uh, city of Riverside, Pat, now in the Agoura Hills Malibu area on the 101 northbound, covering quite a bit of distance here. We've seen um, the car hit an embankment, some sparks fly, we've seen a pit maneuver, and now this pursuit continues. And as you said, Juan, it's already in the Agoura Hills Malibu area. You wonder um, if it'll go through... Um Des's hood and Ventura or possibly head up to Santa Barbara if they have <laughs> mm -hmm. enough fuel to do that. I'm just wondering what the damage to this vehicle is you and Des have been talking about with sparks flying down on what three tires lost one tire mm -hmm. or they down on the rim just how far it can go. This is a Hyundai Sonata and I heard you all talk about mm -hmm. how, how important um, the not the search, but mm -hmm. the pursuit for law enforcement is because this is a carjacking suspect. Yeah. He's also, he also has a felony mm -hmm. warrant. That's right, Pat. And you know, we're gonna be wrapping up our coverage here on KCAL News in just a moment here. If you wanna continue following this pursuit, uh, Pat Harvey and our Desmond Shaw, they're gonna continue uh, the very latest on this um, carjacking suspect pursuit happening right now in the San Fernando Valley. And we'll be coming up on KCAL Shaw. News on Channel 2 momentarily on KCBS so if you can turn the this. dial to channel 2 we'll be on channel this. 2 my, and my thing. and I believe uh, Desmond is going to get uh, resituated there you are watching KCAL news at 11 on CBS Los Angeles and we do have breaking news for you CHP is in pursuit of a carjacking suspect that carjacking suspect also has a felony warrant out for his arrest we understand that this person carjacked a vehicle that we believed belonged to his girlfriend and she possibly called this in this started in the city of riverside and now as you can see there it is is way past it's in agora now and it's mm -hmm. he's still heading northbound on the 101 freeway so no telling where this could end up uh, he could end up going on, on the 26th going to moore park or continuing on to ventura but you have to wonder just how far this car can go we know chp is behind I believe the sheriff's 
deputies are overhead in uh, the chopper, but we have Desmond Shaw, who is live in SkyCal, who could give us more information. Des? Yeah, Pat Boy, we have sure have covered a lot of distance here, and uh, it, it does seem like this car might uh, be deciding that it has had enough, as we know that they're down to only, oh boy, we're coming in with another okay. pit maneuver, Whoa. another pit attempt. Two in one night here, so the fourth and fifth time I've ever seen it. Let's see if they're gonna try wow. to pin him in right here. Indeed, they, they smash him right in the front and up against a pole right there. They said no more of this. Enough is enough. They mm. want to get this person into custody. CHP not messing around on this one. Oh, look at on this. the uh, northbound 101 as we come through Agoura Hills. They just came right up and just nabbed this person. Wow. It's so rare to see that, to, to, to come up and put themselves in harm's way. They must have known that the suspect did not have a mm -hmm. weapon. They did not waste any time rushing up, yanking the suspect out of the vehicle and now in handcuffs. You know what? Wow, Desmond, this was uh, pretty incredible to watch here. You wonder, maybe if um, they were on the phone with the girlfriend and maybe she possibly gave them information saying that he didn't have a weapon. But look, they just, as you say, did another pit maneuver and just went up and pulled this person out of the car having enough. Enough is enough. And that's your CHP for you. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, if we, we always say that CHP tends to be the most aggressive mm -hmm. uh, with these uh, situations, and uh, they just showed it with not one but two pit maneuvers. We had wide open roadway. There were very few cars on the road, a lot of asphalt. The suspect was only at about 40, uh, 30 or 35 or 40 miles an hour, so they made that calculated decision. Let's make another attempt to bring this to an end. Uh, fortunately, you know, the vehicle spun around, and there was no opportunity for the suspect to get away as they got kind of pinned between this light pole right here, and they, they moved in with their own vehicle, pinned them in, and then to rush out like that. And just like that, we go from, you know, a slow, what was turning into a slow speed pursuit to a code four situation. They are now giving this uh, the all clear. No one else is in the vehicle. And the uh, carjacking and domestic violence suspect that came out of Riverside is now in CHP custody. You know what? It was almost like a boxing match with vehicles. They decided, okay, we're going to punch you right back. And that's exactly <laughs> what they did, right, Des? After they did that pit uh, maneuver, they just pushed that vehicle up against that pole there. And um, as you said, probably didn't believe that this person had a weapon because they were super aggressive and just continued until and even going up to the car and just opening up the the door and snatching that person out of the vehicle um, Desmond we want to show our viewers the first pit maneuver and if you can describe this I believe this was in Encino when this happened right at yeah. Havenhurst yes. if, hey, hey, yep okay yeah, there we that's have right. it yeah yeah that, that very first one wow yeah that, that first one there and that was you know where we saw the uh, they could tell that the vehicle was having trouble being only on the three tires and they decided to take that opportunity as there were not a lot of vehicles i think they had a unit that was most likely running a traffic brake behind them so that they could keep uh you know the public out of harm's way if they used that opportunity for the pit for the first pit maneuver of course then the suspect decided to take off they lost some tire tread they also uh, had the bumper flailing for several miles after that but it was clear that that be, between the suspect hitting the curb and then that first pit maneuver that you know some significant damage was definitely done to the vehicle and that they were not going to be able to continue for too much longer at least not at very high speeds and now here as we get into agura hills uh near the uh, canaan exit uh, that is where they decided to uh, do it again and the second time was a charm for chp tonight all right and uh, desmond as you mentioned you called code four and that is what we have all right thank you for that desmond we're going to move on with the other news.